Okay guys, we're back. Another day. We're going to get this uh, intake all done. Um, got myself some uh, Krylon Satin White. I decided not to go with the uh, flat. Um, flat's a little bit more like, I don't know, like 400 grit sandpaper it seems like. So um, this will have a not a whole lot of sheen, but uh, a little bit. Um, from the pictures I was looking at on the internet, it doesn't look like it's just completely flat. So anyway, let's go ahead and get uh, going on this bad boy. Um, I am going to do a few lighter coats um, so that we don't get the uh, pooling of the paint that we had yesterday. So um, I also made myself a little jig here so that we don't get uh, overspray. Let me show you that. All right. So you can see I've masked off uh, most everything just with uh, plastic bags and uh, this will just keep me from getting the landing gear or anything that else that we don't want to get. So let's get going. Okay, so I'm still getting a little bit of uh, overspray back on the little fairings at the front of the wings, but that's okay. We're going to have to reprime that anyway. Okay, we're going to let that first coat uh, dry a little bit before we put on any more. Okay, so check it out. Um, it's actually looking uh, pretty good. Um, still have a little bit of the paint build up and a little bit of a drip over on the, that side that you can see. And you know what? I'm not totally convinced that I didn't sand off um, when that might be the primer underneath, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So um, it was kind of dark, so I was just kind of guessing where I was sanding. So. Um, and the only weird thing is up on this side, I don't think you're going to be able to really see it, but um, yeah, you can just barely tell. It's looking like it's a little bit of an alligatoring effect going on there. So I'm not sure if I uh, put it on too heavy, or um, which that wouldn't surprise me. Um, the sides there kind of got the tendency to get a little bit more but anyway we're getting uh, pretty close and we'll make it perfect so um, you can see I put the inlet spike in there um, I think it's gonna look pretty cool so and the other thing too is uh, we can weather the inside of this um, to get it to look uh, authentic and cover up some of those flaws um, if you look at pictures on the internet it's not like uh, super clean in there so Okay, now, while we're still sort of letting that dry, and um, speaking of drying, I'm probably going to let this dry a couple days before I attempt to um, sand it or do anything. Um, if you remember when I painted the uh, landing gear, it seemed like it just took forever for that stuff to like uh, fully cure, harden, or whatever it is that it does. So, Okay, but while we're waiting here, let's focus in now on our little bulkhead. Um, now for those of you that are just joining us, um, this inlet spike, um, even though it's scale and everything, it's not just for looks. Um, there's actually a bulkhead in front of the um, landing gear there that uh, this is attached to. It goes up through the duct like that and then this piece is going to go up in the uh, cockpit area and we've got it uh, notched out there and the bottom of the spike um, was also notched out and there's a notch in the in the bulkhead that's up in the fuselage already um, so everything locks into place um, what that does is it keeps the um, whole duct from collapsing when uh, when the landing gear and the weight of the airplane and everything is is on it so this actually 
It's a carbon fiber. Um, uh, I made the spike out of carbon fiber, and so it's strong, and uh, that's what this is for. So, the next thing that we're going to do is this fits the contour of the fuselage uh, pretty darn uh, accurately. Um, but I'm planning on putting that air sequencer in front of it. So I can either run all the hoses across the top. Um, there's a little gap underneath here that I can run the hoses. But for the neatest installation, and I'll show you this in a, uh, when we do get it uh, finally mounted, um, I think what I'm going to do is chop off these points and that'll allow me to run the air hoses along the one side of the fuselage, come to the air sequencer, and then the other side to where the um, goes back to the air tanks can go back this side of the fuselage. So it'll be a much um, cleaner installation. So that is our next project. We're going to go ahead and uh, Chop off those little guys right there. Okay, so I was going to use a jigsaw for this, but uh, this is the general shape that I'm going to use here, and I can just use my sander for that. That's more fun anyway. So um, let's go ahead and give that a go. Okay, there we go. We're just about ready to put this bad boy in, but um, like I said, we're going to have to wait for the paint to fully cure inside the duct before we can do uh, any more. So we're kind of done with the duct project for now. So I'll go ahead and upload this video and uh, we'll figure out what our next project is. Looks like I'm all done with that. I'm going to turn the camera off here. You know, I need to get some uh, high salt for the next step, so uh, let's go out there and get that. Do, 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 do. Oh man, it's freaking cold out here. Uh, let's see. Let's get the high salt. There it is. Back to work. I've got videos to make for my fans. this in case uh, it gets cold. 100 watt light bulb puts out a lot of heat, right? Okay. Stay right here. Oh. Okay. Okay. Alright. Well, let's see. Sander. No. No. What about uh, batteries? No. C4? No. Uh, okay. Alright. We're in trouble. Okay. I can throw that. I can get some attention. I can throw that off the balcony. Please, in, out. 